Hello wonderful people, this is Mary Lou Areño and welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. So for today's episode, I'm going to present to you Waiver 101. Yes, it is possible to get a waiver in order for you to change your J-1 visa status into another visa such as H-1B. So are you ready? Let's begin. So I'm going to explain to you the process of securing a waiver or no objection statement from your home country. So what is a waiver? A waiver in the exchange visitor program is requiring two participants to return to their home country. So that is one of the law in the United States and probably in your respective home country. But there is a possibility to waive that by getting a waiver from the uh, United States uh, USCIS. So if you are subject to this requirement, but you cannot go home or you all not to go home for two year residency, then you need to explore the possibility of uh, uh, getting a waiver. And there are many ways of getting it. So if you apply to the Department of State Waiver Review Division for recommendation that USCIS grant you a waiver and you get that waiver, then you are good to go to change your J-1 visa status into another visa, which is the H-1B. There are five bases of securing a waiver. Number one is the no objection statement this is a statement uh, that you need to apply from your own home country. So your home country government may issue a no objection statement through its embassy in Washington, DC. Alternately, a designated ministry in your home government may issue the no objection statement. So in the case of, let's say the Philippines, you can secure your no objection statement from the Commission on Filipino Overseas or through the Foreign Affairs Office. So those are the offices that you can uh, apply for no objection statement. So if they grant you that, then you have to file it in the United States for your waiver. The second uh, reason is to request by an interested US federal government. So like, for example, you are working on a J-1 visa to a federal agency here in the U.S. You're working on an important project. And um, if the agency feels like for you to go home and leave your project unfinished and they feel like it is detrimental to the interests of this agency and their mission for the project, then they can assist you to secure a waiver. And this is through US federal government. They are the one who will submit a request to your home country in order for you to be granted by no objection statement. And then you can stay and get a waiver. So this is like a federal government agency requesting to your home country. The third reason for securing a waiver is uh, through persecution. That's the reason. If you, feel, if you believe that you will be persecuted based on your race, religion, or political opinion in your home country, if you return to your home country, then you can use that. It's called to apply for persecution waiver. So you have to establish the fact that if you go home for two years, you will be persecuted, then you must submit your form I-612 application for a waiver for of foreign residence requirements to the USCIS. But uh, this um, reason for applying a waiver entails several documentation. You really need to establish that, okay? And then the fourth reason for um, securing or applying for a waiver is the exceptional hardship to a US citizen or a lawful permanent resident spouse or child of an exchange visitor. And this is commonly used by some of uh, J-1 visa holder. 
And uh, this is the situation in, in where J1, the, the J1 visa holder, it, it, let's say if you're married and you went to the United States um, with a J1 and you gave birth in the US, so your child will be a US citizen in that case. Or in some cases, you came in the United States with a J-1 visa and you are a um, single or eligible single lady or single um, um, gentleman, then you get married in the U.S. And of course, if you go home for residency, you will leave your, your U.S. citizen wife or U.S. citizen husband. And that is a hardship on your part, on both of you cannot be separated especially if your husband is not willing to live with you in the, in the Philippines. So you can apply for those reasons, the reason of exceptional hardship through giving birth to a U.S. citizen child or by marrying a U.S. citizen, okay? So um, you have to present the birth certificate of your child or your marriage certificate with a U.S. citizen or permanent resident um, spouse in order to apply for your waiver. And you must submit form I-1-6112 application for the waiver of the foreign residence requirement to the USCIS as well. So that is um, an easy way if you are single and willing to find your, you know, the lucky one in the United States, or if you are a young uh, couple and you can still, uh, you know, planning to give birth. So those are the reasons, the number four reasons, exceptional hardship, okay? And the fifth reason is uh, request by a designated state public health department or its equivalent. This is under the Conrad State uh, 30 program. So if you are a foreign medical graduate, who obtain exchange visitor status to pursue graduate medical training or education in the United States. And at, at that time, um, you are needed in, in the United States and um, they feel like you are valuable um, contribution to, to the country because of your expertise. And um, you can request for a waiver under that Conrad state 30 program, and you get a waiver for that. And uh, if you have an offer of full-time employment as a healthcare at a healthcare facility in a designated healthcare professional shortage. So let's say um, there's a pandemic and there's a shortage in, uh, in the medical professions and you are on a J1, and you would like to stay to, to help, then you can apply for a waiver for that reason, okay? So um, for the Republic of the Philippines, uh, there is a, an office, uh, it's called the uh, Commission on Filipino Overseas. And um, through the help of the foreign affairs and other government agencies, they uh, came up with the guidelines and procedure on the waiver of the two-year home country residency requirement for exchange visitor um, visa holder. And um, based on these guidelines, there is a need for you to uh, come back to the home country for two-year residency. So that is like their guidelines and law. But that doesn't stop there, as I've mentioned, there are five reasons. If you fall on any of those uh, five reasons to apply for a waiver, then it is possible. Yes, it is possible. And um, as I have mentioned, I am a living example. I came in the United States with a J-1 visa, and then now I am a, a naturalized US citizen. I went through all those processes. I, I went to obtain a no objection statement from CFO in my home country, the Commission on Filipino Overseas. And then my employer um, petitioned me for H1, that is a working visa. And after you finish your working visa for so many years, I think up to five or six years, but sometimes you don't have to wait that long if you're, uh, 
employer is willing to petition you for another visa, which is the, the green card or the permanent resident. So those are the steps. From day one, you get a waiver, and then you go to H-1B, and then you can shift to the permanent or the green card. And then after five years of having the green card, if uh, you decided to be a naturalized U.S. citizen, then you can move to that direction. So even you are on a J-1 visa, don't lose hope. Yes, it is possible to be uh, a resident in the United States if that is the direction that you are planning to. So don't give up on your dream, okay? So um, this is the website that you can visit the EVP committee to apply for NOS if you are a uh, resident or a Filipino citizen who would like to get a waiver, okay? To apply for no objection statement, go to this EVP committee. So I hope you learn a lot from this episode in uh, pursuing your dream, your American dream. And for those that are on J-1 visa, don't lose hope. There are ways it is possible. So if you have questions, um, just comment down below or you can email me at the teacher's best friend at gmail.com for more information. And I thank you for watching. So bye for now and to God be the glory. Thank you.